Welcome to Introduction to C Programming. Today we are going to continue our discussion of structures and then discuss enumerations. This lecture is not very long. I'm going to give you an overview of structures, uh, just a review of them, and then talk about enumerations. Uh, and then we will have our program uh, where we're building on the program that we wrote in our last lecture. So to start off with a review of structures, structures are used to group variables into a logical arrangement for use by a programmer. The uh, program itself, the compiler, uh, it's still going to be accessing the variables in individual locations of memory. So it doesn't matter whether we use a structure or something else. The reason that we use a structure is because it makes it easier for a programmer to uh, understand what's happening in the code. Structures are uh, created using objects of other types. So you see the example here. I have a struct that I've named card. Inside of it, I have an integer representing the face of the card, and I have a uh, C string, a char star, representing the suit of the card. When uh, structures or structure member variables are passed to functions, they are passed by value. Uh, we've talked about how to pass a, a variable by reference. If you want to pass a variable by reference, you have to include the ampersand in front of the name of the variable. We can also have pointers to structures, in which case if you pass a pointer to a structure into a function, then it would simulate a pass by reference because if you dereference that pointer inside of the function, you're going to be accessing the same locations in memory. Um, you may have thought that it was kind of odd to have to say struct card and then the name of that uh, variable uh, in your code. So the way that we've seen to create an instance of this struct card is we would have actually written down here struct card and then the, the variable name. This is a little cumbersome because, and it doesn't make, it's a little weird because we don't typically have uh, variable types that consist of more than one word. So what we can do in that case is uh, we have a keyword called type def. And what type def allows us to do is to set a type definition. So you say, uh, after you create your structure, you say the keyword type def followed by struct card. So this is what we're trying to uh, type define. And then follow it by the name of the type of the variable you would like. So now I can substitute in card with a capital C and the compiler will automatically substitute in struct card for me. So this here is exactly the same as if I had just, as, as if I had said struct card space my underscore card. That would have worked exactly the same way. However, now anywhere else after this line of code, after line number five in my program, anywhere else in my program, I can just say card space and then the name of a variable. And that is going to create an instance of my struct card structure. So it just gives us a little abbreviation. It's very commonly used so that you don't have to type struct space the name of the structure space the name of the variable whenever you want to create an instance of that structure. Uh, we have one more little abbreviation that we can do here. Uh, instead of having to put the type def after the structure, you can actually type def the structure itself. So you can say type def and then you can say struct. Now notice we don't have the name of the structure immediately following the keyword struct here. When we say type def, then we just have the keyword struct. We don't put the name of it. We open the curly brace, have the body of your structure. After that, this is going to be what we are type defining. So now this is going to work exactly the same way as what you saw on the previous slide. You can just say card with a capital C followed by a space followed by the name of the variable representing uh, that structure and you can create multiple variables that way. Uh, the note at the bottom, make sure you understand if you do it this way, if you create your structure using it as a type def, you are not going to be able to create the global variables in line after the closed curly brace. So keep in mind, this is not actually creating a variable called card. What this is doing is creating a variable type called card. And then we still have to create another variable uh, of the structure after that. So let me show you here on the whiteboard to make sure that you understand uh, what I just said here. So it, right after that, I could say card, like inside of the main function, let's say. 
And then I could say card followed by the name of the card. Let's say king. Now what I have in king is going to be um, a face and a suit. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so now I have my king variable, which is of type card, and the card is a type def of that structure. So now, here I'll be able to say king dot face equals, and I can give it a value. So in this case, uh, the face would be, what, uh, let's say maybe a 13. And then I can say king dot suit equals and let's say like uh, diamond okay so uh, we can then use that variable king just as uh, if we had declared this structure a little bit differently okay Okay, enumerations. Now this is our uh, second topic for today. Um, actually, my last slide for today also, uh, before the program. Uh, so an enumeration is just a set of integer enumeration constants represented by identifiers. Uh, what that means is that this is a way that I can create identifiers to represent uh, values, uh, integer values. So take a look down there at line one. I say enum, that's a key word for enumeration. I then give my enumeration a name. In this case, I named it months. Then I open my curly brace and I can put whatever I want inside of there. The first one is going to have the value zero. The second one has the value one. The third one has the value two and so on. If I wanted to change that so that it starts somewhere else, I can do it like I did on line two where I have enum months one and then I said January equals one, and now February is going to get the value two, and March gets the value three, and it just continues incrementing after that. Those variables now, um, so you can see down uh, in my main function, so take a look on line six, I'm creating uh, a variable called month, and the type of the variable month on line six is an enum months. So, the variable here on line six, which is month, actually is a variable of this enumeration type. So it's an enumeration type that I have here on line one. So now the value of month is going to be January, Feb, or sorry, Jan, Feb, or Mar. Those are the only valid values that I have for this variable month. Now we know that Jan is zero, and Feb is one, and Mar is two. So what I've done here, and this is typically what you do, is I'm iterating over all of the months that I have inside of that variable. So I say for month, which is my enumeration here, equals Jan, well that's the first one. And month is less than or equal to Mar, well that's the last one, month plus plus. Well, what I'm able to do then, is in this case I've created this uh, character, uh, this string array. Uh, and I have enumerated over all of those and printed out the values. Now, remember that the value of this variable month is going to be Jan to start, which is actually the integer value zero, because that's the first value in the enumeration, and I haven't set it equal to something different. So Jan has the value zero, Feb has the value one, Mar has the value two. So I'm going to say zero the first time, print out mon sub zero. Well, mon sub zero is going to be January. Then when I increment month by one, that's going to make it a two. So now I say mon sub month. Uh, oh, sorry, that's going to make month one. I do mon sub one, that's going to give me February. And then when I increment it again, it becomes a two. And I say is two less than or equal to mar? Well, mar was zero, one, two. Mar was two. Two is less than or equal to two. So then I print out mon sub two, which in this case is going to be March. I increment month to be three, 
and it says is is three less than or equal to mar. Well, we know mar's value was two. It's not. We're going to break out of our loop. So this is going to print out the strings January, February, March. But we iterated over this enumeration that I created up here. Again, the compiler doesn't care about the enumeration. This is only for programmers. It makes it easier for us to understand our code. You can look at this example here that if I actually had enumerated out all the way through December, then it would make sense that we didn't have to know that I was, in, that I was iterating over 12 months, but instead I could say I'm iterating from January to December. And it makes it a little bit easier for a programmer to understand what's going on. You don't have to deal so much with the values. You can just deal with these words that actually represent something that's meaningful to us as humans, as the programmer. It's much more meaningful. So this is where enumerations fit in. One thing I want you to think about, since we talked about the type def on a previous slide, think about how you'd go about type defing one of those enumerations. Maybe write a little code sample, see if you can figure out how to type def one of those uh, enumerations, since I don't have it on this slide here. Okay, I told you it was going to be a short lecture, uh, not very long. We're going to write a program building on the one we did from last time, so take a look at that, and uh, good luck.